Hello and welcome to the workshop. On this episode, I'm going to turn this giant blank into a sphere using the jig. Now, I did ask you guys whether you wanted to see a giant egg or a sphere. Most of you said sphere, so that's what we're going to do. Now, before I go bolting on the jig and turning the sphere, the first thing I need to do is rough this blank down into a nice cylinder. And I'm also going to take this edge off here, just so it's less to take off with the jig. So all I'm doing here is I'm just using the tool and I'm taking it down until I feel no more run out. You can see here that the tool catches in this spot but doesn't catch in this spot and we want to get rid of that and make ourselves a nice round cylinder. So now we've got ourselves a nice cylinder, but you can see down here on the bottom where I got some air trapped in the mold, I decided not to go all the way down to take these out, because we are going to turn a sphere, they'll naturally get turned off, and we need to keep this as big as possible. So the next thing I'm going to do is start turning the ends. Now the reason I do this is because when I put the jig on, it's such a slow process, that the more you can do now with these tools, the quicker the jig process will be. I nearly forgot one of the most important parts. We need to get our center line. Now to get our center line, the first thing we need to do is check the diameter of the cylinder. Now I've just got a pair of calipers that I can check that with. So we just want to put it around the middle. Get ourselves a fairly snug fit. And we have 10 centimeters. So now that I know that measurement, I can grab myself a Sharpie. And we want halfway, so we want to mark five centimeters. Now, just looking at the bell, we're actually a bit taller, so we've got room to play here. Now, just looking at where I'd sooner lose it, I think, I think I'd probably sooner lose it off the top. Keep a bit more of the wood on the bottom, so we're just going to go down probably five mil off the bottom. Mark our five centimeter line. Okay, so that's our halfway mark. Now we'll just run that all around. Okay. So now that we've got our halfway mark, we can start turning away from there. So we've taken a little bit off each end, now my chisel is starting to get a bit blunt so instead of sharpening it though, I think I might throw the jig on and we'll start turning it with that. Now before I put my jig on, I like to move my tool rest all the way over to the left, so up against the headstock. Now the reason I do this, is as you start to get down to the base here, you're going to want to bring your tool rest over, grab a chisel and start hogging some of the material out, that way it'll make it a bit easier for the jig. Now if you were to keep your tool rest over to the right, and then put your jig on, there's no way of getting this past the jig without taking the jig off. And once you've set up that center point, you really don't want to touch it again. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. It's just started raining.
bit of a wet day today. Now mounting the jig is a pretty simple process. You got a nut on the bottom and then a big threaded washer and take them off. And then you just sit it between the rails in your bed and then put the washer and the nut back on. Now setting the jig up is super easy. I like to just twist the handle all the way to the back here so it's out of my way. And the idea is it's got this sliding pin here. And this is your middle mark. So all we need to do is line the point of this pin up with the line that we drew earlier. So once you're happy with the center mark, just lock it down tight. Now the next thing we need to do is adjust the cutter. It's got a little carbide tip on the end here. And what I like to do is wind this all the way out as far as possible. Now once I've done that, I like to find the part of the piece that sticks out the most. It's generally down this end. You just want to bring it up fairly close to that, and that'll be our starting point. Because then we've got to lock down the bolt that's underneath. Now the other thing I like to do as well, is I like to have my cutter sitting between sort of 11 and 12 o'clock. As if you're looking at it on a clock face. So it's now time to start using the jig. Now this is a long slow process so take your time. Now the way I like to start is with the machine off, I like to bring it up to the furthest point and take the cutter and bring it forward until you're nearly touching the piece. Now once I'm close to touching the piece I can turn the machine on and then we start working away at the resin. Now just to give you guys some idea how long this will take, it is currently quarter past one. So let's see how long this takes us. Let me put you in a better position. So as you can see, all I'm doing is turning the knob, probably about an eighth of a turn, and then just slowly running it over the blank. So I finished one half of this sphere. Now we started at quarter past one. It is now 147, so it was about half an hour. Now you can make this go a bit quicker if you do the front and back side in the same pass, but because I'm showing you guys how to use this jig, I thought I'd get the front half out of the way first, because the back half's a little bit more tricky, because obviously you need to keep it on the waist block for as long as possible. So now I'm gonna start on this back half, but I won't go all the way down to this bottom edge just yet. I'm gonna work sort of just maybe a quarter of the way up to halfway. We're just gonna work on this area first and then we'll get going on the bottom. So now that we got to this point, I'm gonna bring over the tool rest and I'm gonna start taking a bit of this material out and I'm just gonna follow this curve. So 
So as you can see, I've taken some material out. Now I didn't go down too far. You've got to leave a little bit there for the jig to do its job. And I've also widened this gap up here, just enough so that the jig can get in there. Now you will have to slowly go back with the chisel and keep opening it up, but just be careful. You don't want to go too tiny and have this break off the waste block. So you just got to be careful how far you push your luck because you really don't want to make this too thin because if you get a slight catch anywhere it's just going to break it off and ruin your piece. Now the next thing we need to do is cut this away from the waste block then we're going to put it between the two cups and fix up this bottom end. Okay, now that we've got that cut away, we can put it between the two cups and turn this down. Now make sure you got this nice and tight in the cups because you don't want it to move. So now it's just a matter of bringing up the tool rest, taking our chisel and turning this down. So when you're doing this part, just make sure you sneak up on it because you don't want to go too deep. You've still got a real slight edge there, so you've got two options. I can leave that and get it out while sanding or just take it out now. I think I'll just take it out now. That's better. And there we have it, all finished. A ball made using the sphere jig. Hope you enjoyed this one guys. I'll see you next time.